All right, welcome back, everyone. Today we're be, we'll be doing Frantic Fields. I'm very excited to be presenting this guide to you guys. It's a super difficult stage. We're going to be going over the strategy that you're you're going to use your first couple times through this game. Uh, we'll be going over the Dosido strategy afterwards. Uh, it's more ideal for you to be doing strats that uh, you can nail realistically your first time through. You want to be completing runs, and then once you're at that more advanced level, you can start looking at how to save time with the Dosido because it is a very difficult tactic. So, thanks to a very good friend of mine, Joachim S. He actually helped me work on the, uh, the route for this stage, for this tutorial. I actually do not frequently do the uh, do -si -do less route, so he gave me some tips and advice on, on how to make a consistent route for you guys. And he actually took some of his, uh, his route for this stage based on Crunch's work. As you can see, it is a Rambi stage. It is a pretty straightforward stage as a result. You are intended to basically run over everything with Rambi. Again, because we are using Rambi, it's important to have uh, pogos whenever you can because they will save a lot more noticeable amounts of time than continually having to start up your run cycle. Fortunately, Rambi is so big that he is capable of running over these gaps that normal, normally uh, Donkey Kong and friends would fall through. So, not too long of a stage. If you happen to get all the strategies down, you should have no problems in completing it relatively quickly. Alright, so now we're going to go back and explain everything that just happened. Uh, take a look at where you want to be jumping, what sort of decisions you're looking to make throughout the stage. So the first thing you're going to do once you get out of the cutscene is you're going to jump into a pit of spikes. Now you can take the upper route where you roll along the two top platforms, and if you're going to do so, you could roll along the first one and then bounce off the penguin on the second one. But if you're taking the pit of spikes route, you want to do a light jump into the pit of spikes and then do one full pogo and one light pogo, and that'll get you right out without any problems. You'll notice that with the tornadoes, they start to pick you up the moment you roll by them. So long as they're going the direction that you're going, you won't get spit out of them or rejected by them. So you just want to make sure that while you're going through this first section, you're trying to catch an important cycle where you don't get rejected by a tornado. You just keep rolling along. It's not very difficult. The first one you'll pass through, the second you'll, one you'll pass through. You won't even have to jump because the second one will bring you up to the next platform where there's a flaming hedgehog. And you don't even have to jump over the flaming, over the flaming hedgehog because you'll actually roll through him before he gets the chance to turn on his fire and hurt you. So after the flaming hedgehog, there was a giant walnut with a with a helmet protecting his head. You want to make sure you jump over him and then just keep rolling. You'll roll straight through a swooper duper, and you're going to want to make a big leap that'll get you past the Rambi crate. Uh, after this Rambi crate, you're going to want to roll a bit off the ledge. Uh, you'll be going toward the pit of spikes, but you want to make sure that you roll off the ledge completely before jumping, so that you can clear the next gap. You're going to land before the. Uh, before the next tuck enemy that you see, so that you can roll through him instead. And as soon as you roll through the tuck enemy, um, the next thing you're going to be doing is a, a pogo. So you want to roll through the, the tuck, and as soon as you roll through him, jump and do a light jump, and it's a full pogo, which will land you on the next platform. With a light pogo after that, you'll be uh, cleared of the spiky pit area. So long as you are continuing to roll, you can always jump even if the tornado picks you up. So make sure that you're doing a light jump before you uh, reach this helmeted, shielded tuck. You're trying to do a full pogo before him so that you can clear him without having to worry about him uh, hitting you. And don't try to roll through him because he will just block your roll attack with his shield. So shortly after the pointy shielded tuck, you have a bunch of rising and falling wooden platforms. Just make sure that you're doing uh, jumps when appropriate, and you can actually bounce off the archie that comes afterwards, and that'll get you up on the ledge without having to worry about it. Um, the tornado that's coming up immediately afterwards, you just roll straight through. It should always be going forward by this time, and then you'll be able to jump up onto the next ledge afterwards. 
With the Rambi crate coming up, you just want to make sure that the moment you land on the Rambi crate that you break it and immediately start running. Uh, doing this will allow you to continuously run over the, uh, the edge onto the first shifting platform, and then over the end of the shifting platform onto the next rising wooden platform. Uh, this is only because of the fact that the platforms are lined up so as you keep going, but if you should stutter for any reason, you need to make sure that you jump or that you're prepared to dismount off ramp to save yourself. With this last wind section, there's nothing that can really go wrong, but it is important to note that uh, you have to be holding right. Even if Rambi is running, you have to be holding right in order to advance forward. And then at the very end, you just want to make sure that you do a, a hop that will land you on the rightmost side with a full pogo, and that will land you in the, the spinning barrel without having to slow down or wait at all for any reason. So after clearing the first section, if you wanted to do an all pogos route, which you're trying to do right now to get past the first section, the rest of it's uh, pretty easy to figure out on your own, but you want to make sure that you're doing a, a you break through the Rambi brick, and then you do a, a hop, you want to pogo off of the first wooden platform, and you want it to do a light enough pogo that you'll land on the left side of the stone platform immediately afterwards, the one with the three enemies. And this is because if you, uh, if you hit the enemies on the way down, um, the game will give Rambi priority and run into them, which will make you stop pogoing. So if you want to keep pogoing, you want to land on the leftmost side of the stone platform, you want to do a pogo off of that side so that you land on the walnut, uh, do a mm, sort of light pogo, you're basically going to be flying over the tuck after him, and you're going to be skipping the first one. And this will allow you to get onto the next section. Uh, pogos throughout the rest are pretty easy to determine. Once you get into the third section, what you're looking to do is you're going to jump immediately so that you can get up on the, uh, the there's a ledge that's going to be a little high up, you can't really run to it, you have to jump to land on top of it. Then you're going to run straight off, you're going to land on top of Walnut and destroy the enemy, and you're going to do another jump to land on the, the following stone platform. And then from there you can actually run straight over that one, you'll do another hop, and then run straight over that one and do another hop. And then you'll be pretty close to the gold barrel. Now for the gold barrel, what you want to do is you want to make sure that you uh, you jump up there, hard enough so that you make the leap over the gap, but you don't want to accidentally jump into the gold barrel. And it's okay if you stutter a little bit doing this, because you need to actually wait a split second so that you can break the Dixie barrel. You don't want to sit around um, for too long, but at the same time, if you rush straight through, you won't break the barrel at all. So for this last stone section, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to run onto the first platform following the one that you land on, and then you're going to do a jump, followed by another run jump with Rambi, and then you can run straight off onto the last platform with two tucks on it. Uh, jump at the end of your jump, you want to dismount Rambi, and then you'll be at the gold barrel. And that's it. And now we're going to be looking at the coveted do si -do. This, this strategy was actually discovered last year in October or November, I believe. Uh, not so newbie was looking for a way to collect all the letters in this stage for the 100% route without having to slow down. And he found that when you roll into a tornado and it spits you back out, if you roll afterwards, it will actually throw you out with some crazy speed. So making, uh, making use of that speed and then setting up a pogo route through the stage is incredibly difficult, but uh, with enough practice, you'll be able to do so as well. So once you get started with your do there's really no stopping it. You want to be doing it off the first tornado, and uh, you turn around, do your roll jump setup, pogo, roll, and this will give you the speed that you need to make it through the rest of the stage at do -si -do speed. Uh, keep in mind that this route is never exactly the same. You have certain landmarks that you're looking to be uh, pogoing off of, but you're never going to be doing the same type of pogo as Aldra. In fact, you're going to find that as you go through a do, -si -do version of this stage, you're going to have to have it practiced enough to know um, exactly what will happen each time. There's a lot of random factor to it in the sense that, uh, oh, that never happened before. Well, how do you adjust to that? And that's how you're going to be able to save your do -si -dos in your run. And once you get past the first section, it's pretty much exactly the same as a non do, -si -do version of the stage. You just won't have time to grab Rambi meaning that you'll have to do a lot more roll jumps in the middle of, middle of the stage. And you'll also be ignoring Dixie. Uh, it'll be easier to pick her up in Scorching Torch, because you won't be saving any time trying to use her to flutter at the top at the end of the stage. Pretty difficult to execute, but should you manage to get a full dosido -do in your run, your run will be something very special and precious. 
So bear in mind what you like to do in order to maintain or sorry to get your dosido -do speed is going to be unique to you but this is just what I found has given me the most consistent results and even at that I find that it's uh, terribly difficult to get dosido -do speed so this is hoping that you'll get the same dosido -do speed with enough practice you'll learn how to get it yourself and what you want to be doing is uh, after you do the intro to the stage um, Spike Vegeta actually pointed this out that if you uh, you roll over to where the token is beyond the first tornado stop turn around and then you want to roll through the grass and as soon as you cut the grass jump and then hold right this way you'll be thrown out of the tornado at an optimal speed this is assuming that you did the beginning of the stage without any problems and what you're going to do first is a pogo to get you onto the section where the flaming hedgehog is and then you're going to do a roll jump through the hedgehog onto the rest of the stage should you have gotten enough roll speeds to make it through the tornado, the first thing you're going to do is you're probably going to land on top of the super duper, uh, depending on how you jumped. I like to make sure that I do land on top of him, and then you're going to be pogoing beyond the Rambi crate onto a patch of grass. From there, you're going to be pogoing off of the pointy helmet tuck. And from here, you're going to be landing on the shifting platform, uh, the one that's uh, usually going from left to right. You want to do a pogo off of that in such a way that you get through the tornado without being given too much lift or none at all. If you do a full pogo off of this platform, you'll go through the next tornado, you'll get no lift from it whatsoever, and you'll just fall in the first gap. If you do a very light amount, instead the tornado will pick you up a lot, throw you off into the pit beyond the tuck, but then you run the possibility of being ledge clipped by the wall, and that'll kill a lot of your tornado speed. Now getting through the tornado successfully should land you on top of the tuck or just immediately after after him. If you land in the pit of spikes it's not a problem so long as you manage to land either on the tuck or on the left side of the pit of spikes so that you don't clip on the ledge. Pogoing out of there will get you into the next tornado and then you'll be landing on the small platform with a flower on it just before the shield pointy tucks. You'll be doing a pogo over the shield pointy tucks before another pointy helmet tucks and then from there you'll be doing another pogo uh, just before the three wooden platform section. Now with these three wooden platforms, the pogo that you just did right before them, you want to land on the second of the three platforms, and you're trying to gauge, this is a good spot to gauge your speed. If you're going too, f if you're going too slow, you're going to be doing mostly full pogos, and this should give you a clue that you should pull back in a second, because you're coming up on the, uh, the quote-unquote bitch nato. This tornado, if you pass through it, um, but you are not going fast enough, you will fall in the pit immediately afterwards. So what you want to do is if you're doing light pogos to get across this section, which is a good sign, off of the second wooden platform and just before the archie, you're going to do a pogo that is strong enough to get over the archie without getting hit, strong enough to get over the platform behind them without landing on it, but it has to be weak enough that when you go into the tornado, you don't get rejected by it because this tornado is moving towards you, that is why it is called the bitch nato. It is really difficult to get by without losing speed or being caught by it. And if you're not going fast enough while going past this tornado, instead of landing on the next wooden platform, you're going to fall straight underneath it. Immediately after the bitch nato, you're going to be pogoing off of a wooden platform, and then you'll have two light pogos following. Uh, this is also depending on how fast you're going, but basically you're going to be doing two light pogos to make it up the, the first hill. And then you want to do a strong pogo to land either on top of or after the Rambi crate. Preferably aim for on top of the Rambi crate because if you're going too hard you may fall into the gap. So what you want to do is off of the Rambi crate you're doing a light pogo to land on the right side of the next shifting tree platform. And then from the right side of this shifting tree platform you're trying to land on the hoots. This is sometimes a medium to light pogo. Off of the hoots you're doing full pogos and then you're in the last wind section of the first part of this stage. Uh, from this section what you want to be doing is full pogos mostly throughout, uh, avoiding flaming hedgehogs where you can. And if you can manage to do the very lowest form of pogo you'll be able to get underneath one of the flaming hedgehogs which will allow you to do a, a damageless version of the of the finish for this, this section. And if you manage to uh, get damage list, you'll be able to keep your speed all the way until you get to the the arrow that, sh that shoots you into the, the second section of the stage. Should you think that for any reason you'll be um, taking a damage from this Flaming Hedgehog, and if you took damage from an earlier section of the stage, uh, it is better to keep cranky 
than to give him up and pick Rambi up. So you want to make sure that if you're going to run into this Flaming Hedgehog, that instead you give up the do -si -do right then and there, and you just keep rolling to the end of the first section. So that right there, that is the Dosido, -si -do, and that is a very difficult trick to execute. It saves quite a bit of time if you can manage to get it on the inner percent route, because not only are you saving um, time by going incredibly fast, but versus time attack where you are doing the same exact trick, you're instead doing it off of the first tornado rather than the second tornado, which saves even more time. There are very little differences between uh, the way you finish this stage with and without Rambi, uh, but as you can see, it's just a lot more roll jumping involved, and uh, you want to be careful with your pogos, you want to make sure that you keep cranky and uh, finish this stage strong. And you will have quite a nice bit of time save on your hands. This will certainly help you improve your time So lastly, we're going to be taking a look at Time Attack here. It's been a while since I've actually uh, gone and bothered to, to grind this stage out. But at the, at the start, Michael Goldfish had the record for this stage because of the fact that he was the first person to get the do -si do in Time Attack. Um, and then he kept improving his time while I uh, picked this game up. I was trying it myself. Uh, and we had the top two times for a while. And as we got more runners involved into this game ever since uh, AGDQ, we had more people taking interest in this particular trick. So it's become a fun stage to practice in terms of uh, executing what the route looks like for all of your pogos and what to expect when uh, something changes ever so slightly. This is definitely a complex uh, trick that you're trying to work into your runs. So again, I do highly recommend that if you're going to work this strategy into your runs, that you're going to be doing it after you've already gotten a strong time in this game. This is something that you really want to worry about after you've gotten a complete game time from start to finish under an hour and 40 minutes. Uh, anything over that, uh, I really recommend that you work on other parts of this game. Uh, the game has a pretty low uh, estimated time for perfect strats. So with about 10 minutes of uh, goofs now expected in the run, between 130 and 140, it's more desirable to practice other elements of this game before you go and perfect a do -si -do. I do hope that this guide helped. This was, uh, this was a pretty difficult guide to make here. I actually had to do uh, a number of these attempts off offline, and with a lot of editing help from my friend Yak, uh, we were able to get this video out for you guys. So. Once again, it's, it's been lots of fun doing the dosido, -do, and uh, next time we'll be doing Scorch and Torch. Nice break. Thank you for watching.